It's part three of our series on Swift data, and we're still on the way to Swift data. And this time, we're going to look a little bit closer at core data. Last time, we visually built a simple data model using core data and looked at the XML underneath. This time, we're going to generate Swift code for our core data models. You might remember we had three entities. We had a meeting, a location, and an employee. And the meeting, for example, had two attributes, the reason for the meeting and the time of the meeting. And it also had two relationships, a to-many relationship, which was for all the attendees, and a to-one relationship, which was for the location. The details were stored as XML. So, for example, for meeting, we saw that it had two attributes, reason and time. And here are the two relationships, attendees and location. And if you zoom out, you saw it also had the information for the employee and the location entities. But even in the days before Swift data, we could represent our models with code. And so if you select one of the entities and you go to editor, you can choose to create the NS managed objects subclass. And so in this case, we only have one data model. And within it, we select all three entities because we'd like to generate code for all three of them. And we pick a location, although this is kind of a trick because even though we're choosing CD inside, when we click create, for some reason, it's created outside of that location that we selected. And so I'll move these files inside of CD. In fact, I'll create a group called model and put them inside of there. And so along with the code that we generated, I also moved in the persistence.swift file and the core data model itself. We're not done. We need to go back to our model editor to make sure that each entity knows to use that code that was generated. And so we switch from class definition to manual, none. So what code got generated? For each entity, there's two files that got created. You can see there's the core data class and the core data properties for each one of them. Let's first look inside of the core data class file. So here it is for employee. And the first thing that we notice is that employee is a subclass of an NS managed object. So a lot of the facilities of core data comes from NS managed object and we inherit those by subclassing. This means we need to import core data. And in fact, we also need to import foundation. And just as if you created your own button action for a UI button, we have to mark this as at objective C. And that's just so some of the mechanisms will work right behind the scenes. So this add objective C in the subclass of NS managed object is our tie to the path that we're going to break once we get to Swift data. So that's our class file for employee. Similarly, the class file for meeting looks almost exactly the same as does the class file for location. So those are the core data class files. Let's look at the core data properties files that were generated. In particular, let's start with the location file. Again, we have to import foundation and core data. And the first piece that we get kind of for free is we're conforming to identifiable. Location has two attributes, so there they are. There's the building, which is a string, and the room, which is a string. Actually, they're both optional strings, and that's something I don't care for and we'll take care of next time. And also, because we're using the core data mechanism underneath, these are both marked as at NS managed. Location also has a relationship to meetings. One location can be associated with one or more meetings. And so when I see its type as meeting, I realize that I've made a mistake because this was supposed to be a to many relationship. We're not going to fix that. I just want to call it out and we'll look at a to many relationship in a moment. As before, you get the optional after meeting and it's an at NS managed. And that brings us to the final piece that's given to us in location. And that is we want to be able to search for all of our locations. And so the template provides us with a fetch request that returns an NS fetch request generic and location. Location is at obc, and so we mark the method as at non obc so that we can call it outside of this mechanism. And it returns an NS fetch request generic and location based on the entity that is named location. I'm not a big fan of types being passed in as strings. We can easily make a mistake or do a refactoring and miss changing the string for this, but that's the way this code works. You can also tell that this template's a little bit old because you actually don't need the return anymore. So I mentioned that I should have had a too many relationship. Let's take a look at a too many relationship. And so inside of meeting, here are the two attributes, reason and time, and a to one relationship for location. Each meeting is in a single location, but attendees is a too many relationship. And unfortunately, we use an NS set to represent it. The template also generates some accessors for the attendees 
there are two methods, add to attendees and remove from attendees, that allow us to add an employee or remove an employee. And then there's these versions, which allow us to add or remove a collection of employees. So that's meeting and we've seen location. I want to look at employee just briefly to call out one more thing, and that is the badge number is an int64. The types that we're able to specify saving in core data influence the type that we use here. I'd rather use an int. I don't want to be converting to and from int64s throughout, and we'll look at that next time as well. On the one hand, it's great having actual code for our entities. We can read it, we can code against it, we can better understand it. On the other hand, I'd love to see better ints, fewer optionals, no special types like that in 64. I'd like to avoid using nsset if I could. I'd like value types instead of classes for my entities. And I'd like it to feel more like idiomatic Swift. And we'll be able to move to all of these except this one next time, even while still using core data.